Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the AFT Show. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track and the co-host of the podcast Off the Groove. Today's show, it's already episode number 12. It is presented by Arai Helmets. I'd like to say thanks for Arai for making this thing happen tonight. Again, I'm Scotty Dubler. Let's bring in our co-host. She's down there, I think somewhere in North Carolina. She won't tell me the exact location because she doesn't want any visitors, but let's bring her in. Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm good. I think I've told you I'm in Denver. I, we love visitors. Denver? Don't look them all. We're on the left side of the lake, so we're over near Lake Norman. <laughs> you just said Denver. Is there, is there another Denver besides Colorado? Yeah, there's a few, but we're in uh, Denver, North Carolina, so we're kind of out in the sticks, but that's how we like it. <laughs> how are you doing, Scott? Are you doing well? I'm doing good. I actually got to go do a race last weekend, a Steve Nace race. It was an AMA All-Star National Flat Track mm -hmm. event, so it's good to be back at the racetrack. And, uh, man, I'm just uh, excited for this show, especially – and it looks like you've got even more stuff put up and you're turned around a little bit different in your office. So how's the move in going? Yeah, it's been going well. I tried to follow that race on Instagram this past weekend. I was watching me tweet about it and Carver and uh, you were even telling me some good bio info on Colby Carlisle. So that just makes me more excited for the season. Like, is it here yet? <laughs> we're getting close. We are getting close. It'll be here before we know it. I can't wait for July 17th and 18th down in Volusia for the first time ever at Grand National. So it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, what about this show? I'm, I'm super excited about it. Yeah, I think having Shana Texter and Jared Vandekoy, obviously he's out in Pennsylvania training with Shana and Breyer. Um, I'm really excited to talk to Shana about the season because since the new schedule has been released, we haven't had a chance to kind of pick her brain. And if there was one rider in the singles class that I think could really make a huge impact this year and be in that championship conversation, without a doubt, it's Shana Taxter. And then we go to Jared Vandercoy, and he's one of those guys who I think in that twins class with the development the bikes have been making and the addition of Ricky Howerton to the Harley Davidson team as a mechanic with um, Brian Smith, all of that coming to fruition this year. This is a year for Harley Davidson. So two people I'm really excited to talk to, right? Well, let's bring him in right now. We just talked about him. She kind of teased it a little bit. So let's bring him in on the number 52, the factory Red Bull ATM rider. It's the winningest AFT singles rider in history, Shayna Texter. And also right beside Shayna, it is the factory Harley Davidson, Vance and Hines rider, Captain Chaos himself, number 20, Jared Vandekoy. What's up? Hey, what's happening? Oh, How you guys good. doing? Before we get moving, where did Captain Chaos come from? I know I'm new to the party last year being my first year, but where did Captain Chaos come from? Uh, in 2018, I, my first year on the Harley Davidson team, my team manager showed up this like, what was like play date we had. And I think I bounced off the tire wall like eight times. And he's like, all right, we need to settle you down a little bit. You're kind of chaotic. And, but he always called me captain before. So he's put chaos behind it. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Like it. <laughs> so Jared, you've been out there out in Pennsylvania for a while. Uh, I mean, what's what's the reason behind that? You don't like Ohio? Or you just are you moving to Pennsylvania or what? I try to. I bring my dress here every time, but I'm picking up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just been good. Um, change it up a little bit in Ohio. I'm kind of all by myself and uh, hang out with some friends here and there. But it's always pretty motivating to come here and hang out with these two and uh, fun at the same time. Do you have any chores when you get to the house? Like, is Shane and Briar like, hey kid, if you stay here, you got to do this? Like, what's going on over there? Well, at first I called Briar and Briar's like, yeah, man, I miss you. Like, come on, like, let's hang out. And I get here and he has a pile of rock about eight foot tall. And he's like, hey, we're going to do some gardening, okay? I'm like, oh. Earn your keep, Jared, earn your keep. Yeah, Jay's like, got that chainsaw, there's tree, trees down in the back. Well, tell us about the tree cut. And Shana, you mentioned it before we got before we came on air. It was your idea to have him go cut down a bunch, you know, eight trees or something like that. How, how did this come about? And what was the reason for cutting these trees down? Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of knows, I think at this point, we, we live in the woods in a log cabin. And uh, about two weeks ago, we had like F1 winds come through here and, and knock a bunch of trees down our road that we were actually trapped in our house for like a week with no electricity. So yeah. kind of was like, all right, we got lucky. So we should probably take a bunch of the dead ones down around the house. So we started counting them and uh, we already took down 12 and we probably got another 12 more to go. So wow. I, uh, Jared said, hey, you might want to bring that chainsaw. <laughs> Jared chopping wood for mom and dad out there, huh? Are you like the son in the family? I know that there's kind of a running joke that you're like Briar and Shana's adopted son, but really? Yeah, really. I mean, we've been dragging him around since he was, what, 16? 16. 16, 16 we've been dragging Captain Chaos around. <laughs> So, so tell us about the chores, Shana. It seems like you like doing the outside work. Do you make Briar uh, stay inside and clean the house and take out the trash and that fun stuff? 
I don't make Briar do that. He just chooses that. He doesn't. He's not much of a, a manual labor person, and he'll admit it. Uh, <laughs> Cole neither. Cole hates it. Like, Cole won't do it. I'm out gardening, like, lifting heavy bags of, like, mulch. Yeah, same. And, and I mean, I, because I grew up with Corey, and he's the same exact <laughs> way. So, um, yeah, I mean, Briar's family joked. I got him a toolbox one year. And they're like, why did you get him a toolbox? He ain't ever going to use that. And uh, <laughs> But, no, I, I actually, I really enjoy being outside, mm-hmm. mowing the lawn, pulling weeds, just whatever. Yeah. Briar actually joked the other day. He's like, man, you would rather be out here all day doing this than spend an hour in the gym. And uh, he's 100% right. I, I'm not like a, a natural gym rat uh, where he, he tends to like working out. I, I don't enjoy it. I'd rather get my workout outside. Yeah, same. So, Jared, tell me about your diet. I've, I've never seen you really focus on, on your nutrition and your diet. Is staying out there, does that help you with maintain your diet and start a diet? And, is you know, we're only just a few weeks away from the race season. So have you switched anything up since you've been out there? Or, you know, tell me about what you eat and stuff. Well, I'd say, like, some chicken tenders. <laughs> Wait, where, are you a Chick-fil-A guy or a Zaxby's guy out there? Chick-fil-A. Okay. Chick Fil A for sure. Yeah. Uh, cookies and cream milkshake. Oh my! Yeah. God. Jared's like, diet doesn't change all year. It, yeah, he's consistent. It's mild. Yeah. I'm the same routine. I mean, fine. anything yeah. green? No green no at green. all. No green. Me neither. Me neither. No green yeah. Jared. It's uh. I mean, I've just been doing my own thing. You know, Jake Johnson always told me a happy racer is a fast racer. So I eat how I want and. We'll just settle it on Saturday nights <laughs> or this year, Friday and Saturdays. Well, even yeah, though you know, you like your diet, your nutritional free spirit, um, even though we know your diet isn't hundred percent there, you've been training with Shannon and Briar a lot while you've been out in Pennsylvania. And that's where I think some of the work meets what you're doing at home. Um, you've been biking. What other things have you guys been doing? Are you hitting the gym every day? How are you staying fit during quarantine? Uh, I'd say just, you know, mostly on the road bike. Um, they do a lot of mountain biking, road biking, and a lot of gym. I usually skip the gym sessions that they're in and sit on the couch with Agio. So <laughs> a little pug on me, snuggle on the couch. But, uh, I mean, we've just been hanging out, really. I mean, they, they're keeping us pretty busy on uh, yard work, cutting a lot of trees, like we said, and doing some rock around the house. And it's just been keeping them pretty busy. You know, their family comes over, we hang out. and But as far as the whole eating process – they they cook so well. It's hard not to just eat constantly. There's leftovers in the fridge. Um, her grandma just brought peanut butter balls over. They're so good. So so, so Shana, what what's a typical meal there? Do you do the cooking or does Briar? And what do you guys eat most? Um, I mean, it, it varies if we're in season or, or out season. You know, when we love the off season because we can eat whatever we want. But uh, Briar, being that he's a lot taller in the sport, he's always worried about his weight. So. For us, he'll do a lot of the grill cooking, and I'll do the inside vegetables and stuff. But mostly we'll eat chicken, um, some venison, um, some turkey, a lot of ground turkey, and, and then vegetables and salads. But he's super into to maintaining a certain spot of his weight that um, sometimes it's super difficult because the guy loves his sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Shana, I know that you're also getting ready to plan a wedding. That's on the horizon for you. Um, what is that like trying to balance getting ready for a season? That's obviously got to be your number one goal right now. But then also trying to you know pick out floral designs and bridesmaid dresses and all those things. How are you kind of juggling that? Uh, it's it's been stressful and hard, you know, because we're trying to juggle racing and, and getting ready for the season. But at the same time, once we start racing, you know, it's it's going to be wide open right up to our wedding. Mm-hmm. So for, yeah, I'm trying to get as much done. Um, thankfully. Uh, we were able to get the bridesmaids dresses ordered and, and my dress ordered. So that's out of the way. Briar's tuxedos ordered. So now it's just the fun little stuff, you know, um, ordering flowers, picking them out. Um, we're doing our cake testing this weekend. So I'm super excited about that one. And um, I'm just trying to get everything done because once race season starts, there's no time. You can't, and, and I can't ask Briar a question. Like that guy is just full on race mode when we start and, and there's no questions being asked about a wedding. So. Hey. I got a, I got a question. We're talking about testing, and I know Vandekoy is sitting right there. Is your mouth watering too? Because we're talking about testing, so quick, man. I mean, come on, You're, you you got to be all in, right? Yeah, unfortunately, they're kicking me out this week, so I don't think I'll be here for cake testing. I'm like, oh, road trip back. <laughs> it's only seven hours. I ain't scared. <laughs> yeah. Um, will Cruz be the ring bearer in the wedding? 
Um, yeah, actually, uh, Ruth and Liam will be our ring bears, and then uh, Emily Johnson and Agio will be our flower girls. Oh, uh, I love that awesome. family is like so well represented in the wedding. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, everyone's like we're such a close knit family, and uh, you know, it's so great to be growing up with the young kids of the younger generations and see them, you know, falling in love with the same sport that we love. I can't wait to see Cruz in a little like tuxedo. That's my favorite. Like little kids in tuxedos is the best. <laughs> okay. So, what what's it like living in a in a log cabin? I just have absolutely no idea. I can't even fathom that. What tell us what it's like, Shana? Ah, uh, it's it's super quiet. That's for sure. Um, yeah, we when I bought the house, you know, I wanted it to kind of be our vacation home in a sense because we don't typically get to go on vacation throughout the year. You know, we're always traveling, but it's it's for work in a sense. So when we came back home, I wanted it to be quiet, enjoyable, and, and a place to relax. And and that's what it is here. It's just it's a fun little place. We can have campfires every night, enjoy each other's company, and uh, you know, tear up one hundreds in the backyard and and just have fun at home. We, you know, talk about racing being such a, a family driven sport, and you both have families with long histories and flat track and racing. Jared, why don't you um, kind of start, but speak to how you got into American flat track racing? Yeah, it was kind of a family thing, as you say. Like, uh, my grandpa raced, um, which he had four sons, and they all raced growing up. So it was like I was destined to, to do it. Um, my dad was an expert rider. Um, once I was like 12, he ended up giving it up and focus more on me um but i know scotty got to ride with them some and uh now it's just all my cousins have raced uh, my brother's racing now little kill switch he's on the 450 this year for the first time and uh, kill switch is that his nickname yeah dad's got his hands full that's for sure so so tell us i know a lot of people know this story about kill switch but uh he's not here to back himself up so you can tell the story and then we'll have to ask him the story a little bit later on this season but tell us the story of how he got the nickname kill switch in 2014 it was my very first uh grand national in the pro twins class at springfield mile and uh it was a it was a miracle day for me honestly we went out and fast qualified we won our heat won won the main and uh going for the victory lap we put him on the front and for some reason his hand was on the handlebar hit the kill switch he says it was Kevin Clark, but we're not buying that. <laughs> You're not buying that story. <laughs> to take the victory lap, but uh, I guess it's more memorable now. So That's uh, cool. So, Shayna, we know you got a long history of racing, too. So tell us about how your transition into flat track was. I know, we know your grandfather raced sprint cars, but tell us some more about the, the family history of racing. Yeah, my uh, my mom's dad raced sprint cars, as everyone knows, is in the, the Knoxville Hall of Fame for sprint car racing. But uh, on the on my dad's side of the family, my my grandfather actually raced a little bit before the war, and then uh, gave it up and uh, opened a Harley dealership in the fifties. And uh, my dad and my uncle came along. He got them involved in racing. And um, in two thousand two, my dad retired and uh, signed my brother up for a race in two thousand three. And about halfway through the year, I was like, man, I want to I want to try this. And uh, you know, thankfully, my dad owned a Harley shop and was able to mount some fuel blast tires so I could go racing the next day. And for me, I haven't looked back. But we have, you know, some some history in the sport. But, man, those Vandercoys, I can't keep track of them. There's so many of them. There's a, there's a lot of them. <laughs> They're surrounding all Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Shana, Shana, one of my favorite memories, uh, well, I've got several with you, but the, the first one was an amateur. There was a race in Guthrie, Oklahoma. It was a, 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 a you know, Mike Kidd, who used to put on the Arena Cross Series, put it on. And and I think almost every other race you were out there, and you won every race except for you stalled your bike going into the infield of the TT. And I think you still uh, had a wonderful weekend. But uh, is that one of your most memorable moments as an amateur rider? Um, I mean, for me, that was cool. I, I left leading the VT. BDTRA championship, which was kind of something funny to leave uh, Guthrie with. But um, for me, you know, some of my most memorable races were actually racing with Jeffrey Carver, James Rispoli. Um, you know, we had so many battles as youngsters coming up through in, in the regional nationals and then carried on each year to the, the amateur nationals. It was just just such a fun time to be a part of, you know, so many good riders. You know, Brad Baker would show up, Mikey Avila. Um, and then, you know, we would join North or East versus West trying to compete for the number one plate for the end of the week. And, um, you know, for me, it was just a special time to, to grow up with, with some of the best flat trackers of today's sport. Being able to be a part of that amateur racing community is so cool. Um, when we were younger, our family always went to Loretta Lynn's, but, um, 
you're now on another side of things, Shana. You get to kind of watch Cruz experiment a little bit with this. We had Corey on the show, not last week, but the week before that. And uh, he was talking to us about how Cruz just kind of gravitates to the bike. What is it like being an ant and kind of watch him um, explore that side of himself and, and enjoy racing as much as he does? Oh, it's so cool. You know, I wish my dad was here to see it because, um, man, he's just a natural already. He gets on that strider and on his Stacy and just takes off. And it's like, I watch him on Instagram all the time. The kid is good. Yeah. He's doing stuff. I'm like, holy cow, Corey, he's already jumping better than we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really cool and special, though, just to see, you know, we were watching Supercross the other night and he was tuned in just watching and just, you know, observing and. I didn't even think he was really paying attention. And then all of a sudden they show a replay of a crash. And he's like, oh, no, crash. Like, so he, he's 100% aware of what's going on. And it's, it's a special time to see him growing up. Jared, do you have a favorite memory as an amateur? I know I, I called a lot of races with you as an amateur growing up, too. Do you have one that stuck out as an amateur? Not one in particular, no. It was just mostly going to, like, a, a bike week, you know, starting in uh, Oglethorpe in Savannah, Georgia, racing there, go to Volusia and just the memories along that way. Um, and also you got amateur nationals, those week long races that you get to travel with your, your family and stuff like that. It, uh, it was real special for me and kind of looking back on that, how much fun we had other than like driving throughout the night now racing, driving right back. It's like, we actually had, you know, quite a bit of racing going on and it was, it was cool. Cause after the races, hanging out with your friends and family and, then uh, going to the hotel, swimming with all the kids and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was a special time for us. Well, Shana, not too long ago, a video came out from Red Bull, and you got all fixed up. You're on the cover of a magazine, everything, wearing makeup, which we hardly <laughs> ever see. So um, tell us a little bit about that video. I think it's over 4.3 million views, if I'm not mistaken. Change of pace. Yeah, it was – man, it was – so crazy the way it played out. I mean, honestly, the way the races went for me, the days they were there taping, you know, couldn't have played out any better. Um, it was such an experience, though. Uh, you know, the, I spent eight hours out in my garage shooting for one photo for the magazine cover. And uh, wow. as soon as you got done, like, can you go take that makeup off? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> right. That's what they asked for. So I, I showed up and uh, left them paint the makeup on my face per se, but it's, you know, everyone knows that's, you know, my typical makeup is a little bit of some pea gravel and some dirt on my face and, and winning races is more my thing than, uh, than photo shoots. But it was super special kind of to tell my story. I know, um, they're actually already talking about part two. So super excited to get that rolling hopefully, uh, this year, um, and, and see how the story unwinds. Mm -hmm. And if you guys at home haven't seen it, you guys can go to Red Bull TV and watch it. It's change of pace. It features Shana Texter. And uh, I've watched it a few times now just because even the cinematography in it is so good. Like they, they made art of your story and your story is already so compelling, but then to pair it with this great, like really, I mean, just Gucci shots of you racing. It was so cool. It, it's just a great film. Yeah. I mean, even for me, like I, I messaged the producer and I was like, I know it's my story, but I still cried. Like yeah. <laughs> it's talking about myself, but um, it was just such an emotional piece. Mm -hmm. piece and, um, you know, hearing Briar and some of my family and even competitors talk about me, it was really special. Yeah. It's awesome. So today's show is presented by Arai Helmets. Both of you are Arai Helmet, you know, riders. You've been riding for them for a while. So, Jared, what's it mean to put that Arai on your on your head? And tell us about your, your relationship with Arai Helmets. Arai's been super uh, good to me lately. It's uh, I probably got in them in 2017. Shana helped me get in there, and uh, I introduced she introduced me to a few of the guys, and it's just a comfort thing for me. You know, I, you know, I can call them at any moment and they're like, what do you need? Like, and it's, it's out that day or the next day. And, uh, but just wearing the helmet, um, feeling comfortable, they look good. And, uh, it's just a person I, I can trust in and a company I can trust in. Shana, what does it mean to you to put that helmet on? I know, I know it's, you know, it's very important. Safety is very important in our sport, especially, but what does it mean to know that you have that piece of safety on your head when you put that helmet on? Oh, I mean, it's simple. I, I put my helmet on. I don't think twice about it because I know it's it's one of the best, if not the best, uh, helmet in the world. Um, you know, I've been wearing them since I was an amateur rider. And um, for me, it's just – it's it, the closest comparison is, like, when you jump on that recliner and you're like, I'm home, every time I put a helmet on, it's like, I'm home. This is just – it's just a natural fit right from off the shelf. That's amazing. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more with Jared Vandekoy and Shannon Texter about some race in the upcoming season and even more. That's Kristen Beat. I'm Scott Dubler. We'll be right back. 
This is the Arai story. Three generations in pursuit of the perfect handcrafted helmet. Founded by Hirotaki Arai, a motorcycle enthusiast, today the company is run by his son Michio Arai along with his grandson Aki. Arai remains solely focused on one thing, the pursuit of crafting the best possible product for their customers. Not just a family business, but a legacy. All right, welcome back to the AFT show. Below us, we're just having some fun with Jared Vandekoy, Captain Chaos, and Shayna Texter, the factory Red Bull KTM rider. Kristen Beat right beside them. Uh, let's talk some racing. So, Shayna, 2019, uh, you won Texas, Lima, and Sacramento, uh, which are all good wins. Um, tell us about how you thought 2019 ended up. Uh, I was super happy, actually, with how 2019 ended up for the most part. Um, obviously, I didn't like uh, ending Meadowlands the way I did upside down. But uh, to have three wins on a brand new team um, that's still learning, I thought that was huge and, and exciting for the future of, of the Red Bull KTM team. So definitely looking forward to, to continue to develop and make progress with the team. And, and I'm so excited to get rolling for 2020. With how successful you were in 2019, I think people oftentimes forget that was your first time on the KTM team and the way that it was structured. Obviously, you were on a Husky before, and the bikes are similar, but they are not the same. And there were a lot of bugs that you were kind of working out in that first season, something you told me at press day. Chris Fillmore, actually, during the offseason, started hopping on the bike himself and feeling things out. And you guys kind of had that eureka moment this offseason. So at this point, moving into Volusia, like how comfortable are you with this bike and this team? Oh, I'm super comfortable. You know, I spent a lot of time uh, down at the Baker's factory this off season getting ready. And uh, I'll also be heading down to, to Florida early to continue to make that progress. But the team's been uh, stepping up on the suspension and the engine side of things, just trying to, you know, keep evolving. You know, all the teams, you know, they're doing their homework each and every weekend to get better. And, and our team's no different. So for me, when I put my leg over that bike, it's it's just I'm not lying. It's one of my favorite motorcycles, if not my favorite bikes. It just everything about it just it fits me so good. The KTM's are a lighter motorcycle, and and they're a little bit more narrower. That uh, you know, it really fits my style. Shana, the schedule came out not too long ago. You have to be just like licking your chops, ready to go, because there's there's one TT. Uh, it's not a secret. You kind of struggle a little bit. If there is one you know flaw in your program, it's the TTs. You're getting better. We know that. There's only one TT this year. Several half miles. Uh, you just got to be ready for the season. And and could this be the year you win your first championship? Yeah, I mean, Springfield TT last year, I, I rode really well. I was really happy. Mm -hmm. with you know, I felt like I left a little bit on the table there um, with getting taken out at the early part of the uh, I think semi. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of a little upset about how that race went, that I'm, I'm actually really hungry to get back there and, and hopefully make a TT main event there at Springfield. But you know, the one one of the most frustrating things about my career is just people knocking me all the time for, you know, TTs. And, you know, people only think I'm a model racer. And it's like, man, I've won Lima. I've won, uh, you know, a race in wheat. Or, uh, you know, I've won on all different sizes of tracks, but they forget that. They only remember that I won, you know, Sacramento. or And um, so I want to go out this year and, and show there's no mile on the schedule to show I can still win races at, at all different types of tracks. That's my main goal. And I've been working so hard, so much harder this year without and stepping it up and just trying to get stronger. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, too, something to be said last year, Dalton Gauthier won the championship and he didn't make every single main event. I think there were two main events that he was, uh, am I right? Two main events that he was out of. So knowing that and being able to kind of mentally prepare yourself for this season, when the schedule was first released, what was your initial reaction? And did you kind of reset maybe a little bit? Um, how, how did you look at the schedule? What was your re reaction at first? Honestly, I was a little bit bummed just because I've spent so much time at Baker's factory working on TTs and so much uh, went into to being a better TT rider, working with Briar and stuff like that, that, you know, I was a little bit bummed just to not be able to show the progress that I made at, at Daytona, to be honest. So for me, it was, it's obviously nice not having to race so many TTs, but at the same time, you know, as a, as a rider, I'm trained to, to go out and try and win every single race that, that we compete at. So it doesn't matter if it's a short track, a half mile, mile or TT. I know in order to win the championship, you got to be a, a well-rounded rider. And so you're ready for Springfield. Like you were ready to go. Oh yeah. I'm ready now. I mean, <laughs> um, I was ready for Daytona. You know, we, we spent a lot of, we spent two months riding TTs every single day. Um, so for me, I, I was ready to, to attack the Daytona TT. 
We're ready to watch you on a TC. I'm so pumped. I'm like ready for this right now. Shana, tell us what it's like being on the Red Bull KTM team. It, they're huge in the industry. They they had a great, you know, Supercross season. It just wrapped up not too long ago. Uh, so tell us what it's like riding for them. Oh, I mean, honestly, it is a dream come true. You know, last year it took a while to, to kind of get the jitters out of the way, just getting on the motorcycle, knowing, um, you know, the guys that were behind behind it with uh, Chris Fillmore leading the way as team manager, but also having uh, Roger DeCoster and Ian Harrison in the background. I mean, them guys showing up at a test with a downpipe, just stoked to hear what it sounds like on a motorcycle, which is, in, in a sense, mind-blowing to me because they spend every single day with motorcycles. So to see them that excited about flat track was was really special and uh for me you know i spent a lot of time down at baker's factory and and uh you know after some of my some of their motos cooper and uh zach were actually watching me ride so that was really really cool to see them interested in the sport of flat track some good finishes a lot like p4 is kind of where i felt like on a good day you'd settle in right and i know as a competitor that must be kind of difficult to be that close to the podium and just kind of settle into p4 um, what was your perspective on the 2019 season? And obviously it's always your goal to improve, but what have you been doing in the off season to kind of get yourself there, to get yourself on the podium and on the box? Yeah. Being uh, fourth place that many times last year, fifth place that many times, it's always like, man, what else do I have to do to, you know, get that next step. And, uh, it's something I haven't found yet. We haven't went racing. So, I mean, we'll see if it pays off. Um, the team's been working getting some different motor packages, exhaust packages, and uh, we'll, we'll see where it plays out in Volusia. You know, we've been testing, and, uh, I mean, I've been doing my part, um, so hopefully it uh, all plays out in the finish. And um, relatively, we want to get the win this year for Harley-Davidson, but uh, a podium would be a win for us this year, and we'll see where we play out. Do you like Volusia? Say what? Do you like Volusia? Like, are you, are you excited to race there? I grew up there, yeah, um, racing Daytona Bike Week. Uh, we went to Volusia quite a bit, and uh, it's changed so many, so much over the years. Um, I remember first showing up there in, like, 2012, and it was so rough, and, like, they've actually got some different owners in there, I believe, now. So it's a uh, um, it's pretty nice track. Um, they've built it up. they got the catch fences, nice grandstands now. Um, so I haven't rode there since, I think, 2015 was my last year, so – Hopefully uh, we catch on real quick and you know, it's a circle. So how hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jared, you're real consistent last year, 14 top tens, you know, out of the 18 rounds, which is awesome. Uh, you're the most veteran on the factory Harley Davidson team right now, because you've been there the longest you're bringing back Brian Smith's coming with Ricky Howerton. So he's going to be like the older rider. You're kind of the middle, middle child. And you got this young gun, Dalton Gautier. Um, How has the team gelled so far? I know you guys have been, has, you guys have been doing some testing. How have you gelled with Brian Smith and Gautier? I've known all of them for a while now, so it's kind of a, you know, different atmosphere coming in. Uh, three different personality riders, three different riding styles, you could say. Um, so getting at the test, it's like it's so different watching those riders on the same motorcycle that I'm on and where they're riding it. Um, kind of makes you think what you should do or whatever, but it's uh, all the lap times are pretty much playing out where they need to be. Um, so we're always top three at the test. We're always the fastest ones there. Um, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Have you been able to offer Brian and Dalton any kind of setup advice considering you have worked through some of the bugs with the bike in the previous season and you kind of know where you like your bike moving into the season? Like, is there an exchange of information or are you guys all just out for yourselves? I'm pretty much um, – set on my kind of setup. Um, Brian, he's a, you know, he's been around for a while, so he kind of knows what he likes, but obviously it's a different motorcycle and might have set it up a little bit different, but Dalton, uh, not much twin experience or framer experience in general. So he's learning as he goes. And, uh, but yeah, we, we talk, um, and try to get the best options, but we've only lined up on the starting line once at Traveler's Rest. And, uh, we had some good moments and some bad moments, but, uh, we went testing some more since then. And, Hopefully it plays out here in another month. Jared, do you think the improvements to the motorcycle will allow you guys to have more top five finishes and maybe get on top of that box? That's what we're hoping. You know, I mean, the team is putting in work every day in the, the workshop and uh, the riders doing their parts. So all we can do is line up and give it all every round. And if it don't happen in Volusia, we'll show up a line ready to go. I know something you had told me in the off season when I spoke with Brian Smith at a media day in Daytona earlier this year. We talked a lot about power delivery. 
Um, have you guys worked through that specific um, hurdle maybe? Yeah, we've went through, I bet, 25 different motor packages, different exhaust packages, and we're just throwing, throwing it at the wall right now and hoping, hoping something sticks. So it's, uh, it's, it's good, you know, bringing Ricky Howerton on the team. It's, uh, it's been huge oh, for us. Yeah. yeah, bringing him on the team is huge. Just different outside, you know, in the motorcycle world because we've had so many different mechanics in there, um, and all of them have had different ideas. So it's uh, – Hopefully we hit the nail on the head with Ricky. So, so Jared, there's no TTs on the schedule. That's got to kind of be a bummer for you because you seem like you strived and, and did really well on the TTs. But on the other hand, there are several half miles on there, which you also do do good at. So tell us your thoughts on the schedule and, and which track are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, TTs were my biggest thing, you know, being a bigger guy out there, one of the biggest guys actually um, it played into my favor as far as muscle on the bike around throwing weight side to side. But on the half miles, it's been, you know, kind of just like go for it. You know, it's uh, where the weight don't matter that much or your body size. It's kind of, you gotta, you gotta ride the motorcycle pretty hard. Same with the short tracks. Awesome. It's always a good time talking to you guys. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, it's time for show and tell right here on the AT show presented by Arai Helmets. This is the Arai story. Three generations in pursuit of the perfect handcrafted helmet. Founded by Hirotaki Arai, a motorcycle enthusiast, today the company is run by his son Michio Arai along with his grandson Aki. Arai remains solely focused on one thing, the pursuit of crafting the best possible product for their customers. Not just a family business, but a legacy. And welcome back. Right below me, Shana, Shana Texter, Jared Vandekoy, and right beside Jared. It looks like Kristen's right there in the same room with you guys. But uh, I'm excited for this part of the show. It's it's usually my favorite part now. After we started, Bubba Schobert kind of went for a walk on on his when he was on with us. And he was at the bar with the motorcycle bar. Like, I still feel like he just Bubba Schobert was right up here with like the cool things in his house. <laughs> He sure did. So, Jared, you're going to get a little bit of a break because you're not at your house, but we still want to see something cool from you. Shayna, you're there. Who wants to go first on show and tell? Yours is sitting right here. So, Since it's the Arai show, I figured I would show my brand new Arai helmet to everyone. All right. Ooh. I wrote with a matte helmet and this year uh, gloss. That looks good. That looks really good. Actually, since we haven't been at the track, so. Mm -hmm. you, do you sit there in your living room and put it on i mean do you do anything like that <laughs> no that's just b rob i think that sits in his leather <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering if you're gonna call him out on that so <laughs> nah. do you have anything else for show and tell do you keep your old helmets like all of your seasons or do you collect them or so briar will tell you like i'm a hoarder like in the garage up in the attic like i got all my old boots Got all my old helmets, my leathers, the whole nine, because uh, hopefully one day here in the future, we're going to actually put up a shop and kind of set everything up on display. But um, I actually just put a pair of my boots up for uh, auction to help amateur nationals riders. Uh, Corey's going to send a couple kids to amateur nationals. So I, I did part with one pair. <laughs> wow. So Shana, back to the helmet. Tell me what you love about the helmet. Is it the shape of the helmet? Is it the weight of the helmet? Or what is it? I think it's really cool. Like on a ride helmet, everything on the helmet is made to break. So even our vents, they're made to, to break off. Mm -hmm. um, when we do have impact, you know, there's some guys, um, you know, that things are put on their helmets that don't necessarily break off like a GoPro and stuff like that, where a ride makes sure that uh, everything on the helmet breaks off in an accident and um, different parts of the shell is actually, um, you know, inside is made firmer in some areas and softer in other areas, just depending on, you know, where the impact is on the brain and, and stuff that they've done with testing. So super cool. The, uh, the things that they go into developing with the Arai helmets to make sure that, you know, they're, they're as safe as possible. And, um, I think the helmet is honestly one of the best looking helmets out there on the market, as far as being round, smooth and uh, ready to rock. What's the weight like? Is it a good weight? Um, I mean, all the helmets vary from Arai, especially if you get them custom painted. Um, so, my helmet's not too bad because a, a good painter painted it. But actually, if you go pick up some of the other helmets that are painted, if a, a guy's not necessarily a helmet painter, they can weigh like a couple pounds heavier than than an off-the-shelf helmet. So um, 
I think my helmet's pretty light, though, honestly. Jared, what's what's in your lap? What did you get for show and tell? So I've pretty much figured out this Pennsylvania life, but there's one thing I cannot figure out, <laughs> and it's Aj. Why can't you figure him out? She's a she's a different breed. This thing is this thing. This thing, oh, thing is a, it's a dog. It's a dog, Jared. How would you explain Ajio? <laughs> oh, she had her 13th birthday. Oh. Wow. So when it, so we have this dispute in our house, like whose dog is it? Like, is it, does it follow me? Does it follow Cole? Like whose dog is Agio? Agio? Uh, I would say she, she's like 99.5% my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 <laughs> she like loves going racing. She loves being on a motorcycle, the lawnmower. She loves being at the track. Like she'll sleep in my, She's named after um, Ogio gear bags, but I didn't know how to pronounce it when I was sponsored by them and younger. So I always said Ogio. But it's actually fitting because she sleeps in my Ogio gear bags now at the track since a puppy. So that's so perfect. But Aww. other than that, we got a lot of uh, a lot of trophies in our house. <laughs> <laughs> Humble of course. Of course. <laughs> we got a lot so, of trophies. So, so. Oh, man. With Briar last year alone bringing home that many trophies, like, I don't know what we're going to do with them. Between two racers in one house. <laughs> build some build another, build, build build another house. We only have trophies in our house since we moved in at the end of 2017. So we only have 2018 and 2019 trophies in our house. We left the other ones at Corey's house and my, and my parents' house. So I don't – the day they tell us we got to take them home here, I don't know where they're going to go. <laughs> so – Shayna, do you have a favorite trophy, and which one is it? Oh, yeah. I'll show you. All right. Yeah. Here we go. You guys are going to laugh because you're going to know which one it is. Well, Scotty will. Kristen might not. <laughs> all right. So I, I think I think you guys got to build another cabin just for all the trophies. So no, let's see. It's like a trophy display. This trophy's really big. Wow. Do you I'm remember tro- one? Man, Scott- is that Knoxville, Iowa? Yep, that's bragging rights in the house. That's the only that's trophy right. in there. Um, Kristen, Kristen might not know, but she oh, actually sure. beat she beat Briar in that race, and that was my favorite race I've ever called. And I, I, I have <laughs> it's on my iTunes, and every once in a while it just plays. And I listen to the thing like it was like it's crazy. But we're gonna see history. She can hang on for one more corner. The first female to win in MotorcycleSuperstore.com history is Shayna Texter. Tell us about that race. Yeah, I mean, so that's like literally the only trophy in here from 2000, uh, 2011. I won that race, 9-10-11. That's how I'd remember the date um, that I won that race against Briar. That was my very first win, and uh, I actually had to bring that trophy down here for the Red Bull video shoot that we were talking about earlier. So I um, I sat it right below the TV, so Briar can always just remember who won that race. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, what what I remember about that race is you got a horrible start. I think you were like eighth, maybe uh, ninth, and and just picked them off one by one. And then you and Briar had one heck of a battle. Yeah, it was it was Texas was almost as bad last year of a start, but uh, Knoxville. Oh my, that was ugly. <laughs> I was like sitting still in the whole. I think the third row passed me. Yeah, I and, think so. Uh, it's just one of them days where you're dialed in. I didn't touch the bike the whole day. And um, just, I didn't even know if I was going to make that race because Pennsylvania was flooded that weekend and uh, loaded up with some friends and uh, went out there. It's it's crazy to think, uh, you know, where my not only my career, but the sport of flat track has gone since 2011. I mean, I slept in a truck stop in Chad Costa's van with my head on the steering wheel with three other racers in the car. And <laughs> And now I'm very fortunate to get to fly to a lot of the races and um, and ride for Factory KTM. So it's exciting to uh, to be a part of that that uh, generation of the sport, but it's also cool to, to be a part of the new trend and seeing where flat tracks headed. And Scott, not what Jared? What did you call her? The Shana Texture, the Black Knight, or the Dark Knight? Because she had those black leathers on. Yeah, something I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. I left that race with like two nicknames: the the Dark Knight and the Dragon Slayer. Yeah, I like the Dragon Slayer, and I always and I I don't know where. You know, God, Paul, do you Paul, record my nicknames? I, I I love her. You know, I've been trying to give her a nickname forever, and she doesn't like anything I throw at her. So I like uh, you know Showtime, but that was Johnny Murphy. But St. Shayna Texter and Showtime, but now your initials are going to change, so that might go out the window. I still like saying follow the ponytail because that's what these boys have to do. 
we see it quite a bit too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Jared, what is your favorite trophy that you've ever won and, and where is it at? I would say uh, my first Springfield mile one, it's hanging in my bedroom, but there's a close second one, which my first grand national podium that didn't podium Atlanta. Uh, at Atlanta. I got that sit on top of my TV, but uh, haven't got no really cool ones yet. My favorite one's the money when it cashes in the bank. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's so part, part, part of my show and tell that helmet let's see above me right let's see right there that's a jared vandekoy helmet that you signed on the on the shield so uh on the face shield so i'll never let that go but uh, i always got you with me right here it's in my office right now but it's usually in the living room but i brought it in here today since it's the rye show i've got three rye helmets up there and and i, I just want to say thanks again for letting me have that and yeah, no problem all right, guys. Well, we appreciate you all coming on here. And thanks to Arai Helmets for being a presenting sponsor. We will see you real soon down there in Volusia. Is it beer 30 now? <laughs> Past five o'clock, ain't it? I guess so. I forgot what time it was. Well, enjoy your beer. Shana, Thank thanks you, for man. coming on here and putting up with him. Chris and Beat had a great show as always. We'll talk to you guys next week right here on the AFT show. Shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Arai story. Three generations in pursuit of the perfect handcrafted helmet. Founded by Hirotaki Arai, a motorcycle enthusiast, today the company is run by his son Michio Arai along with his grandson Aki. Arai remains solely focused on one thing, the pursuit of crafting the best possible product for their customers. Not just a family business, but a legacy.